I am not in Rwanda, even though it might look like I'm in Rwanda. I'm in Belgium right now, and let me tell you why. So I moved to Rwanda with one objective in mind, to start and run a successful business from Chigali. In these past few months, this has all been taken away from me due to this pandemic, of course, and that has made me leave my beautiful Rwanda for now. In this video, I would like to share with you my journey of traveling out of Rwanda during this whole uh, pandemic and getting tested and also reasons why I've not been posting lately on YouTube and my real, real reason why I had to leave Rwanda. Stay tuned. There are three reasons I can say that I had to leave Rwanda, but the last one is actually the main one. Firstly, the Rwandan government have, has put a lot of strict regulation to to flatten the curve of the new coronavirus uh, cases that are happening in uh, Rwanda. And my sector, the gym sector, has been hit hard. We have been closed uh, for six months now and I don't think we're going to be opening anytime soon. We've been getting a lot of new cases lately and I hope it all goes well. But for me and people in my, my business, that usually means um, no work and nothing to kind of substitute that. So for me, closed gyms equals no work. So nothing left for me to do there. Secondly, normally I like to do YouTube on the side next to my business, but the current state of the internet is full of black people being killed by the police everywhere around the world, not only in America, but also in other countries that I've seen. So it's great that the world is finally catching up with the racism that uh, black people face on a daily. But for me, as a black man, this is just traumatizing in a way. And, I've, and I'm kind of actively trying to avoid it in a way. So you can say I have been, you know, taking care of my mental health because it's not healthy to be looking at these things every day and seeing like a, a representation of yourself being gunned down, being killed for bullshit reasons. And apart from that, the national restrictions on, on traveling and the curfew put on in Rwanda do make it very tough to go out there and to get some great content and film Rwanda as I used to. So YouTube has been on the low. And lastly, my main reason why I had to move Rwanda, um, I don't like to talk about my personal relationship often here on YouTube or in real life actually, but I feel like on this last point, many of you might relate. And if you do, please comment in the comment section below. Before I tell you my last reason, here's a small vlog of me getting my first COVID tests and the journey of traveling out of Rwanda to where I am right now. See you in a minute. Hello guys, so I just finished work here. Uh, right now I'm going to be heading to uh, Petistad to get my first official COVID test. Alright guys, wish me luck. I am on my way to get my first COVID test because the government of Rwanda requires you to do a COVID test five days before your departure of your flight, um, whether you're coming or leaving Rwanda. Uh, in my case, by the time of this recording, it was three days uh, before the departure of your flight. Uh, so the dilemma is, of course, do you first do the test and then book your ticket or do you book your ticket and then Pray to God that you will not have com um, contracted any COVID um, and a few days before your departure and then, and then do the test. In my case, I chose to do the test first um, and wait the results. Uh, they promised that it would come within 24 hours, so hopefully uh, that will happen. And after the, I get the results, I will still have about two days to book my flight. Uh, so that's what I'm trying to do here. Um, wish me luck. Hello, guys. So. It's uh, around 12 o'clock. I have not taken the test yet. Um, apparently my flight leaves in more than 72 hours. So um, I'm going back there when it is exactly or less than 72 hours before my flight leaves, just to take no unnecessary risks. So yeah, now I'm just back home, chilling, gonna have some lunch, and then I'll be back there. They finish testing at four, and my flight is at 4.20. So I'll be there around 4 and see how that goes. So it's a bit late in the afternoon, to be exact, 72 hours and 35 minutes until my flight leaves. I'm going to do the checkup again one more time. Uh, so the, the, the testing place is going to close in about 15 minutes. So I'm hoping to get there to be like the last person to test so that I can make it within that time gap. Okay, round 2, let's go.
Okay, I have been allowed to go sit. Um, let me show you where I'm sitting. Okay, I just finished the testing. So they went with a throat swab. Uh, it went <laughs> deeper than I thought, but it was, uh, it was not that bad. I was just surprised by it. Um, now, just have to wait for 24 hours tomorrow, and after I get my uh, results, I book my ticket. All right, stay tuned. So guys, I was just chilling right here and I got a message from RBC. I am COVID-19 negative. <sighs> so you know what that means, right? I'm going on my computer right there and book my first flight out of Chigali. <sighs> I've been waiting for so long. The flight is in about 48 hours actually, 48 hours and uh, 30 minutes. So hopefully the ticket price has not changed and then uh, we can experience this. Okay. Let me jump into it. Guys, look. Your trip to Brussels, Belgium is booked. Confirmation code is blah blah blah. Summer of your trip. Information is below. Ticket is booked. I'm coming, Europe. Okay guys, now that I've booked, I'm going back to the testing center, see if I can get my um, uh, certificate. I don't know if it's really necessary, but you can never be too cautious when you're dealing with such, uh, you know, unknown times. Okay, so I just arrived at the testing center again uh, to pick up my certificate. Apparently it's still on the way. Um, people are still waiting inside, even though it's like past their testing times. So now we just have to sit and wait for the certificates to come. Apparently they have to be brought here. No idea how long that's gonna take, but um, I'll wait on it. <laughs> right, see you in a minute. One hour later, still no certificates. Many people are still waiting. Ah. <laughs> We are so desperate for this certificate. We are so desperate to fly. <laughs> I got the certificate. Walking out the door. Nothing can stop me now. It's official. I am COVID negative. So now I can do my thing. What's up guys? It's about 28 hours until my flight, almost 26 hours. I'm right here getting a haircut by this guy, Peter Yao. And then, um, uh, yeah, I still have work to do tonight and tomorrow. And then I'll be off. Check you after I'm done.
for hanging in there. So lastly, I have been in long distance relationship with my girl for the past three years now. And half of it has been in an extra long distance from Africa to Europe. For some reason, this whole COVID situation has made it feel extra tough. The fact that I'm jobless now with plenty of time on my hand and the insecurity of when we're going to see each other has put it like a strain on our relationship. Long distance relationships are hard by themselves and this whole pandemic has not made it any easier. If I cannot work on my business, I wanted to at least work on my relationship. So I needed to be reunited with my girl again. And of course, see some of my friends and families again after such a long time. Even though COVID is here to stay and my business is probably going to remain closed and my girlfriend wants to get married now, I'm still optimistic about the future. One battle at a time. We'll get there. Being back here in New Europe has reminded me why I moved to Rwanda in the first place. I can't wait to be back and I would like to see you in the next video or in Chigali. Thank you very much. For, thank you very much for watching. Don't forget to subscribe, of course, and I'll see you in the next video. Muramuchie.